In this video, I'll provide some basic strategies and rationale for how and why we can present data more clearly. And these ideas and strategies are based upon evidence in which it has been found that audiences can understand and interpret information and data when it's presented in certain ways. So why present more clearly? Well, audiences want to listen and see. They don't necessarily want to read. And that's one of the more common pitfalls that we see in presentations is we have these PowerPoint slides full of text, full of information, and it's difficult for our audiences to be able to see that. They'd rather be talked to and have something to look at that they can connect with what you're telling them. So we want to make sure when we present data and to do it in a clear way, we want to make sure the audience is spending time listening and seeing and looking and watching as opposed to reading. Now, related to that is the idea that a picture is worth a thousand words. So when we're trying to relay a message to an audience, we want them to have a visual. Audiences react emotionally and cognitively to visuals. They react less emotionally and less cognitively to uh, lots of text and lots of busy uh, tables and those sorts of things. When there's a lot of clutter uh, on the slide, it makes it difficult for them to be able to interpret and, and absorb what you're trying to get across to them. So using visualizations, using pictures, can go a long way in trying to convey a message. Now our ability to present information actually becomes more credible in people's minds when we can give them a visualization. In some work that's been done comparing how reliable people thought information was in a table form versus a graph form, people invariably indicated that they thought the information was more reliable or more credible when they could see it in a graph versus in a table. It certainly helps improve our clarity and that's one of the things we try and do when we communicate obviously is we want to be able to convey a clear message and we want our audience to be able to understand our message and when our presentation style or presentation mode is very cluttered and does not lend itself to clarity, then obviously our audience won't be able to uh, have clarity in understanding our message. It's important for us to tell a specific story. We want to be able to get across the intention of why data has been gathered or collected and what we want our audience to understand about that data that has been collected, whether it comes from an experiment or a survey or any other method of gathering information, we want to be able to tell the story that that data wants to tell or we want that data to tell. So being able to tell a specific story goes to being able to improve clarity and improve credibility. Next we want to make sure we have a point and we want to make sure the point that we're, we have we're able to make. So that's one of the common questions I ask students as they send me um, presentations for feedback, that's one of the first questions I ask is, well, what's your point? What's the point that you're trying to make? And that's maybe the most important question to ask when you're trying to create a presentation and trying to convey some kinds of information. Our ability to then present clearly and do all these things I've, I've mentioned up to this point helps us create what I like to call a decision-making moment. So when our audience can see our data, they can see the story we're trying to tell, that can then galvanize them to make a decision. So if we present data that shows that there's a certain treatment that's more effective than another, then that can help create a decision-making moment for someone to say, I need to change how I treat my patients to improve my clinical practice because this is the story this data has told me. And so when we can do that, when we can create that decision-making moment, then we've obviously done our job. We've presented our data clearly in a way that the message was conveyed and we've created some kind of change. And that's typically what we're trying to do when we're presenting data to people is, is help them make decisions about something. Um, and so doing all these things I've talked to up to this point can really help create that decision-making moment, which I think is, is an extremely important aspect of presentations. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the common pitfalls that, that we can see when we're presenting data that helps us present data less clearly. And so I'm sure you've all been in presentations in which uh, the presenter has putting up PowerPoint slides and we see slides that have a lot of text on them. 
Now, the problem with these slides is multifold. Um, it's difficult for our audience to, to digest all this information. Um, there's a lot of text. The text maybe doesn't convey a clear message. It is not clear uh, what the intention of the slide may be. And maybe uh, most importantly, our audience is spending their time reading and they're not listening to what we have to say. And so a lot of what we're trying to get across in our message gets lost in this clutter. Um, I think a lot of times people use these kinds of slides because they have a lot of information they want to convey and they think this is the only way to do it. Um, they might have the mindset that uh, my audience wants all this information or needs all this information. And very often that's not the case. Um, you really do need to think about what your audience wants to see and wants to know. Um, and this problem is, is usually compounded, and this is one of my pet peeves when I go to presentations, is a presenter will put this kind of slide up, up on the projector and then will read the bullet points to the audience uh, word by word. Um, and so that, that is not a great way to convey a message because I think it, it, it undermines your credibility um, and it doesn't really get your message across. Uh, people don't want to be read to. Um, they want to be able to see the data and see the message that you're trying to convey. And so and with this kind of slide, the message that we want to convey can, can get lost. Um, and very often the, the audience doesn't even realize what the message was until they see the next slide or maybe two or three slides later they realize what the original intention was. So how do we avoid or kind of take care of this common pitfall? Well, we visualize the data. Maybe the point of that previous slide was to show that um, as the number of days of exercise increases along the bottom axis of this chart, uh, the amount of weight lost um, increases. And so we can convey that message quite easily with this slide. Uh, now we have a picture that, that people can look at and we can explain the picture. Um, so people are lo listening to us um, while they're looking at this visual and now they can make a connection uh, between what the data um, is telling us and, and what the message or what the intention of that slide might have been. So this is obviously a much cleaner, much more impactful um, slide that people can relate to and people can easily interpret um, as you explain uh, the parameters of this slide. Okay, pitfall number two that I find is people try to tell too many stories at once. They put up tables or bar graphs that have a lot of information on them um, that again can be really difficult for people to interpret, for the audience to interpret. Again, they're spending all their mental energy trying to understand the graph or understand the table um, when the point you're trying to make could easily be missed. So let's say we collected some data as to why employees or local residents uh, don't exercise on a regular basis. And we've given them options to choose, you know, this is a primary reason for why I don't exercise. Um, so that's information, that's the story we want to tell. Why don't people exercise? Well, when we present these two kinds of visualizations, this table and this bar graph, it can be really difficult to, for audiences to understand what the point is. Um, and so we can get lost in that, in that data. So how can we adjust that? Well, figure out what our primary point is. You know, what's the point of this data? Maybe it's the most common reason that people gave that we want to highlight. So now we can highlight the really important piece of information from all that data. And maybe this is the fact that there's no place for them to exercise, and that's the primary reason they don't. So now we've taken a lot of information, we've boiled it down into a very salient point, and now we have a decision-making moment. We can say, well, if that's the primary reason our employees don't exercise, we need to give them access to a facility. Um, and so, again, this allows us to clearly get a point across. We obviously need to know what that point is that we want to make, um, but we've now found a visualization that can help us make that point very clearly, very concisely, and now provides a decision-making moment. So those are just a couple examples of, of some pitfalls. And, and in other videos, as I demonstrate um, different kinds of 
ways we can present data. I'll talk about how to do it not so well and how to do it well. But one of the things we can talk about now is, you know, which visualization is best or what's the best way to convey data or information visually. And we think of that usually as some kind of chart. What kinds of charts work best? Well, some seminal research was done uh, back in the, the 1980s in, in which Cleveland and McGill looked at um, trying to find out which types of charts people found to be the easiest to interpret and in which they can most accurately interpret information from. And what they discovered was that the easiest and most accurate chart for people to interpret was when we had data points in position on a common scale. So we can see here two data points on a scale of percentage and it's, it's quite easy um, to interpret and people do very well in interpreting this kind of data and they can do it quite accurately. Um, the next easiest and most accurate would again uses a scale but let's say we put another scale that doesn't have quite the same um, setup it's, it's a non-aligned scale and you can see the scale on the left has a top point of 100 percent but the scale on the right has a top point of 120 percent even though these two scales side by side are not aligned we still do fairly well in interpreting um, the information on them so when we have two scales side by side that don't quite match we can still quite easily and accurately interpret what they're trying to tell us now the next level of ease and accuracy um, has to do with these sorts of visualizations in which people have to interpret the length the direction or angle of different kinds of uh, charts and so length might be the height of a bar graph and our ability to interpret that is, is pretty good um, that when we have direction if we're shown like a line graph for example that shows a direction of change um, that's a little less accurate uh, and easy to interpret and then the next is angle and this is very common in um, uh, pie charts or donut graphs in which we have to interpret the relative size of a chunk um, its angle basically um, relative to others and so we don't often do a really easy and interpret don't have an easy time to, to accurately interpret these sorts of things and then the last or least accurate and easy to interpret type of graphs have to do with area, um, volume, or curvature. Now it turns out that, that humans are, are really not very good at all in interpreting area, volume, and curvature. Um, area is found in visuals like bubble graphs. Um, volume is anything 3D. So when you see 3D bar graphs or 3D pie charts, uh, we actually don't do a very good job of interpreting those. Um, and curvature would be uh, also how you might interpret a donut chart um, or other visualizations that can kind of look like art or can look like um, different kinds of shapes. Um, also, we could somewhat include in this the idea of shading. Very often you'll see gra uh, visualizations charts that have uh, shading. Um, and what this original research found that, that, that people did a, a very bad job in interpreting shading. But what we found now with better technology, obviously, um, we have a better capability to, to show color in our graphs. And most of the research has shown that people can distinguish between four shades of one color before things start to get difficult. So when you've got, for example, a pie chart or a bar graph that has a lot of different colors, especially ones that might come from the same color family like four or five different shades of blue for example it can be difficult for us to interpret those sorts of things as well so the point here I want to make is that we should really work hard to pick charts or graphs as high up in this hierarchy as possible to make it easy for our audience to be able to interpret our, our graphs easily and accurately um, so that being said, we shouldn't make everything into bar graphs. We shouldn't try to make everything into a, an aligned scale. Um, but we can try and use this hierarchy to, to make decisions uh, depending on the kind of story we want to take and, and try or tell and try and strive for the most easy and accurate to interpret graphs. So to summarize, um, how do we go about making our data presentations more clear? Uh, first of all, you've got to figure out what your point is. What's the point you want to try and convey? 
Um, and I think a lot of times people say, well, I have multiple points I want to convey. Well, that's fine, but you don't want to try and convey all those points simultaneously. You want to try and, and make your points one by one um, as, as you move through explaining your data. Choose an appropriate visual. Doing your best to try and find visuals that are high up in that hierarchy of, of ease and accuracy for people to interpret um, and make sure that you can produce a visual um, that is clear and concise so that can help you make your point clearly and concisely and that's one of the things you should work really hard at as you design your presentations is to make those be able to find ways to make them clearly and concisely and lastly you want to try and make it easy for your audience to see your story and to understand your point um, if you have to make your audience work too hard for them to understand what you're trying to convey then they're going to tune out and they're probably not going to get it and that pretty much defeats the purpose of your presentation. So figure out ways to make this process easy for your audience. Don't try and make them work too hard. Uh, you do the hard work up front and then your audience will appreciate how easy it was for them to understand what your point was. So hopefully you found this uh, informative and interesting and good luck using these uh, techniques in your own presentations.